Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to our latest webcast that we're bringing you from Travel Weekly. And you'll see that I'm joined again today by Paul Cleary, who is, of course, the owner uh, and chief executive of Carib Tours. So welcome, Paul. How are you? Hi, Lucy. Very well, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Well, it's an absolute pleasure. And we've got a lot to get through, I think, today, Paul. We were, we're at a good juncture in the year, I think, to sort of take stock. Um, lots happened with you last year as well, acquisitions. And uh, so I think it'd be great to just um, get an idea on how business is going for you. And then we can drill down in some, some specifics. But uh, perhaps you can tell us now, you know, we're, we're recording this in July. How is the year? How is 2023 shaping up for you so far, Paul? Yeah, um, really well. Um, last year, I mean, everything's relative. Last year, was extraordinary yeah. in terms of the success that I think most of us experienced. So last last year, Cab Force has been around for about 44 years. And last year was by far and away the strongest year we've put in in that 44 years. Um, this year was always going to be a difficult second, a, a second difficult second to album. Keep, to keep yeah, that that's yeah. Right. And, and I think realistically, we weren't ever going to top it. Um, we're in great shape. This year has come in really, really strongly, but we are beginning to see things normalise a little bit in terms of this summer. You know, we're not going to talk about the pandemic because that's old news, but we are very much seeing some of the behaviours and some of the challenges which were pre-pandemic pre and now coming so, back in. I mean, broad, yeah, I mean, broadly speaking, this year, I mean, we have a long-haul programme and, and, and a European programme as well. Our winter um, was incredibly strong. Um, our summer is strong, but not as strong as last year. Um, that being said, over 2019, which is the last normal year, we're 45% up. Okay. So I think last year we, we talked to you and you said 2022, you finished 60% up on 2019, which was phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah and, yeah, and and what did you put that down to, Paul? Do you think that was the fact that people hadn't travelled and there was this big explosion of people wanting to get out and travel again, and that slightly subsided? Now is that is that really what yeah. you're it down to? I, I think I think that's exactly. I, I, I tell you the real reason. I mean, that is the reason, but in a way that oversimplifies it. Twenty twenty two, there was still when people were booking for twenty twenty two, there was still large parts of the planet that oh. were inaccessible yeah. not yet on sale for whatever reason the far east was relatively slow for its only good for those good reasons to come back um I, I can't remember the dates but even the usa as a destination came back the destinations where carib tours majors in which is indian ocean caribbean and luxury europe were all pretty much open so right. we found there was a i think what we found was a funneling effect towards our destinations um, yeah hand in hand with the fact that there was that pre the post pandemic Pet the pent up demand yeah. yeah so there was all of that but i think we were i mean fortunate so that's maybe a strange way of putting it but we were fortunate that the destinations that we have were always open yeah and, and, and people were flocking to them this year and a lot of the agents that we work with are telling us the same thing there's been a much more of a growth towards the touring and the more experiential and some of them further flung latin america destinations yeah Africa. so yeah, we 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 we're, we're very got happy. More, we got more competition, I guess. This yeah, year. but I, I couldn't be happier. I couldn't be happier. I mean, forty five percent up on twenty nineteen is 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 still great. Is great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then you mentioned there though that some of these trends or things that maybe typified your bookings pre pandemic are creep creeping back in. Does that suggest they're not the things you want? Because I know you talked to um leaders of luxury our aspire event about you know how prices were, were holding but you it was kind of a warning wasn't it paul you were saying look we're better than that we don't need to discount we mustn't slip back into what happened yeah. previously so are you saying to me perhaps that's one of the things you're seeing creeping in now that people are trying to price match and yeah it you know you can't have it both ways and i think i wish we could you can't have it both ways all through those dark pandemic years we were longing to have the old problems back. Well, guess what? <laughs> the, guess what, Lucy? The old problems have come back. Um, um, yeah. I mean, what, what, what are we seeing? Um, this summer, this summer, I mean, pricing pricing is high. I mean, uh, availability was very, very tight. Hotels and airlines, for reasons we all, we all understand, it's basic economics. Prices has gone up, so price inflation has gone up. Um, 
up until now, I mean, exchange rate has been very weak. The, the, our main two currencies are euros and US dollars in terms of yeah. we buy hotels and then repackage them and sell them in sterling. Um, sterling has been remarkably weak against the US dollar. And I don't yeah. think it's too technical on a bit. It, 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 it all kind of harks back to Liz Truss's short role as Prime Minister back yeah, in that September. Was a bad eight weeks, wasn't yeah. it? Like uh, and I think I think the pound dropped to one sixteen, and it's 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 recovering now. But that has put prices up as well. So so yeah, the market has returned to normal, and there has been a lot of um, sensitivity on price, which you'd expect. We are living through a cost of living crisis, if I can uh, if I can call it that. So yeah, price matching is there, and it, it's just a normal rough and tumble of competitive selling in a difficult market, Lucy. But that's yeah. what we do, right? But 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 when we in the pandemic, when we talked about what was being hit the worst, I mean, I think you came on to some of these sort of debate kind of things that I had on, on on Zoom. But we were saying actually that luxury was withstanding some of it better better than other parts of the market because people had all that disposable income and they were just saving it when they weren't, you know, yeah. spending it going out. So, are you saying now that things have maybe leveled off a bit, or are you still thinking luxury is a good sweet spot to be in oh i'm telling you now luxury is still very much the sweet spot to be in i'm very glad that's where we are but it's um i, I think for all of us none of us can none of us would ever or or should ever take for granted our clients and and, and what you what you find in repeat clients are are are, are are the bread and butter for us. Repeat clients who, 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 who travel with us time and time again, they book with the same agent every year. And it, it's a difficult conversation. It's a difficult conversation to have with a client who's been booking with you for 5, 10, 15, 20 years for a hotel, a luxury hotel. Yeah, that it's suddenly more expensive. That's right. And, yeah. and that, that is a challenge. And and what what else, what more am I getting? Yeah, what, what am I getting? I'm getting paying a, 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 yeah, exactly. So, so it, it, listen, it's not impossible. That's our job. We sell holidays, and that's what yeah. our agents do. They sell holidays, but it, it makes it that much more, 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 more difficult. Uh, and um, and I suppose coupled with the fact, I mean, this summer there's been quite a lot of flight disruption. There's been yeah. kind of there's been um, the various kind of industrial actions as well. So it, it's it's just a little bit of a sticky climate. It's not all doom and gloom, but no, you, you but know, it's more new... challenging than it was last year. And... That's and what, what, what do you do to help get that sale over the line or to help the agents that you work with? I mean, do you are you finding you're having to add in more value or little upgrades or whatever it is? Are you having to sort of put more in to, to get people yeah, to I, I think pay so. that and, extra and price? Yeah, you just you just lay on the service. And and and, and you know what what we have, what Carab Tours and, and what Carab Tours has always had is we have a lot of there is a lot of trust in our brands. There's a lot of trust in our people, the agents we work with. Um, yeah, they, they, they know us, they trust us. Um, so I hope they love us. And that is really, really important. And, 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 and you know, we, we, we're very fair with them and we're very honest with them. And, you know, we have very grown up conversations with our agents and if prices are going up or if there's operational difficulties, we always work with our agents. Yeah, absolutely. So, so looking at this year, then, like in terms of people traveling, like not just the booking side of things, are you, are you confident that we're going to have smooth, uh, you know, year of travel? Because obviously, there's all stuff in the news, isn't there, about you know air traffic, you know, control or baggage handlers strikes, and so how yeah. how are you how are you feeling in terms of your confidence for the rest of this year? <laughs> we are. Yeah, we, we, we're confident enough. I mean, the news is miserable. And oh, I was, I, I, I mean, you do love to pick on the I mean, travel like, industry. I mean, listen, we're not talking about all of the media here, but the mainstream media. It's Thanks for clarifying. What, watching, watching, watch, I was speaking to an agent yesterday, one of our really good agents um, in Richmond, in Surrey. The news is grim. If you read the, if the, the, on the TV news on Tuesday night, just gone, they were talking about this kind of, Armageddon of a heat wave in Greece as in southern Europe. They're talking about baggage handler strikes. They're talking about easy jet flight disruption. And it is, you know, a lot a lot of this is happening, but people want to get away. People want people want to get away. So to answer your question, yeah, we're reasonably confident. I mean, we're always prepared for whatever operational issues are thrown to us. One of one, one of the realities of being a tour operator like us 
is operational difficulties only seem to get thrown at you between a Friday night and a Sunday night when everyone's <laughs> trying to relax after a busy week. But um, yeah, we're up for it. We know what to do. We have brilliant DMCs around the world. Um, we, have, we have a brilliant team in London and in Somerset. So it's what we do. Uh, yeah. But um, it, th there's just a lot of negativity. I don't believe all of the hype. I, I, yeah. I don't think it's going to be that bad. Yeah, I do think they do like, you know, it's a silly season and they like a story and they do like to sort of, uh, you know, blow up the, the issues around people's holidays, I think. But um, but of course, you did add quite a lot into your Europe programme last year. So we can perhaps talk about that. But it, and you mentioned the heat wave there. Like we, we did a ring round of agents and operators yesterday and nobody was seeing people trying to cancel um or amend anything really i mean I, whether that will come i don't know but certainly at the point of who and who we spoke to and we spoke to a lot they were saying it really wasn't sort of impacting people's travel plans Is, are you finding the same yeah uh, it's we, we we actually we, we've seen zero impact of that at all i suppose what we don't know is those on the fence people who haven't yet committed may be put off by it but i mean you, if they're doing like maybe a late booking you mean Do yeah you because there's still a lot of availability in europe just because of, of their just because there appears to be yeah and that presumably books a bit later than the rest of your program does it it does yeah yeah it it, it, it books much later and you know from the day we're having this um conversation and i think most schools will be breaking up on friday right in, in, yeah. in, two, in, in, in two days time so there is still availability in Europe, but yeah, we're not seeing people aren't panicking, people aren't reacting. But um, I often I often think that our mainstream media is motivated to promote UK-based holidays um, uh, uh, and, and 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 frighten people away from going over, over overseas. Yeah. But, uh, well, I don't think you'd want to. I'm looking out my window today, no. Paul, and it's it's not it's not very jolly. It's been raining all morning, so uh, <laughs> not very jolly. There's your headline. No. Oh. <laughs> Well, uh, all right, let's talk about um, product, though, because I think when we last spoke to you, you said that Caribbean was still sort of 60% of your overall business, but you are diversifying, aren't you? Um, yeah. Porsche may still say the same, I don't know, but obviously, you you know, you're, you're growing in Europe. You made an acquisition as well last year, so you added some more, you know, this Just Grenada yeah. group, so... Can, can you sort of tell us now about your portfolio and what that acquisition has done and where perhaps you are looking to, you know, to grow or to consolidate? Yeah, um, Caribbean, I mean, yeah, it, the clues in the name, Caribbean is still very close to our heart. It's where the Carib Tour story began, 1979. We started with a very small program to Jamaica and we've grown and evolved over the years. Caribbean is probably now about 55%. I, I think we're going to get the 50%. So Caribbean is incredibly important to us. It's where yeah. we love most. Um, and and uh, we've got relationships in the Caribbean with hotel owners that go back generations. And it, and it really is lovely. We, we are dealing with the grandchildren in many cases, not many cases, in several cases, when I'm now my product team are dealing with the grandchildren. Isn't that people. lovely? Yeah, it is. And that's a real Caribbean story. And so, so we... we we, we love the Caribbean and our Caribbean business continues to grow. So even though that percentage is dipping down, it's only because the rest of our portfolio. Yeah, that's what I, is, yeah. Is so the proportion slightly changes, but it's still growing. We introduced the Indian Ocean a long time ago. We went into the Indian Ocean and Middle East in 2007. And that is a very important part of our program now. And it's just a natural, it's a natural place for us to be. Long haul luxury beach holidays. Um, yeah sold with service, love and attention. So that, that's what we do. And the Indian Ocean has been a dream. We introduced Europe. Um, I don't, it's difficult, isn't it? You can't look beyond the pandemic. What was it, five years ago? Um, and that, again, was purely because the agents that we work with, the agents that Carol Pools work with, we have, you know, we have very clear, I mean, 80, 85% of our business comes from independent luxury travel agents. Um, the agents that we work with, like the way we do things they trust us they like they like our commercials they like our service they like our ethos um, and we could see how well europe was luxury europe was really coming alive about five or six years ago so we we, we launched with a very small program and we just stood back we were astonished with the, the well first of all we were astonished with the way the trade just latched on to what we were offering well, why do you think do you why do you think that was and and supplementary question was it existing carib tools customers 
that had done the Caribbean, maybe done Indian Ocean, and they yeah. wanted to then go somewhere else with you? Or ha has, have you attracted new customers through that program? Initially, it was the existing customers. And, yeah. and that, you know, without being kind of too um, kind of detailed on it, a luxury traveller has many holidays or, or several holidays. Yes. Throughout so, you the were, so they were having to go somewhere else. For... And that is all it is, Lucy. So we, we, we were keeping them for their Caribbean and then we were keeping them for their Indian Ocean or then maybe a, a Dubai mini break or whatever it was. So it just seemed obvious for us to stay relevant for all of their journey. Um, and so agents gave the Caribbean European program real, real support. And, and uh, we didn't just throw together a European program. We we invested so heavily. We I mean, One of the things we say at Caribbean as a team wish I'd stopped saying it, but we've walked on every beach, we've slept in every hotel, we've swapped stories with the locals. We we, we, we are incredibly invested with everything we do. Uh, we have to be because unless we have that level of know-how and expertise, agents don't need us. We have, yeah. we have to have it. So we, we did that with the European programme and it, it really caught fire immediately and, and, and that has only grown. And then to your other question, then the pandemic came and this growth we're talking about, 60% last year, 45% this year on 2019. So much of that is new business, is on new agents, new customers right. who, okay. who maybe found their way to us during the pandemic for whatever reason. I, I don't know yeah. what their reason And, and we, we saw all those trends, didn't we, when, when people did start travelling again, partly because some parts of the world weren't open, but partly because they just felt more comfortable staying closer to home. I imagine yeah. you must have picked up in, yeah. your, in your more short haul programme yeah, no, no, there. It, 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 it absolutely was. The, 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 the stakes were somewhat, um, the stakes were somewhat lower on a short haul holiday than, yeah. than they were if, if you're going on a long haul flight. So, so yeah, and, and then the final piece of the jigsaw in terms of our product split in, when was it? In March, April 22, we had an opportunity to acquire an excellent specialist tour operator down in Somerset. They, they, they're called Just Grenada Group. Um, yeah. They've got eight brands. I won't mind. Just Grenada, Just Betquay, Just St. Kitts and Nevis, Just Barbados, Just Antigua, Just St. Lucia, um, Just Tobago. And then. Do you know, I had them written down here and I was, I was just going to test you there. I'm written, good, aren't I? Yeah, you've done no. it. <laughs> uh, and the final one is Just Slovenia. So. Um, That's right. We, so. That opportunity came up. I knew all about them long before this opportunity came up. They, they, they have an excellent reputation. They are currently, or they were, uh, a, a direct sell operation, just because that's how that that was how they matured and grew. They, they've been trading for over 25 years. Um, and we added them to the portfolio very comfortably. They, they have a wonderful team. We have an office down in Mel's in Somerset. Um, and, and again, they offer, in terms of ethos, it's exactly, it's the, it's the Carol Ford way. There's a real love and passion and enthusiasm about what they do. They love what they do. They love their clients. They, 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 they pride themselves on the service they offer. So that, that still operates as Just Grenada to its direct customer base. Yeah. But it obviously added product to you that you didn't have. Yeah. And I know you had talked about bringing that some of that to the to the trade to your your yes and, and, and that's that's taken a bit longer than i'd like actually it's just a real it's a real obvious opportunity so they first things first they operate beautifully and seamlessly and profitably and we don't want to do anything that upsets that apple cart they we we, we do what we do to just relate it incredibly well um maybe we've added some expertise on marketing maybe we've tidied up the back office system we put them yeah. on the back. So all the stuff that people don't need to see but at their heart that business is now growing so we've added I mean, it's a very small business but we've added yeah i else. think it was about a thousand passengers and two million yeah. turnover when you took yeah. it on yeah. so and, and this year and this year that will be two and a half million okay so nice this, so that's and, good and, them yeah. doing it. and that is them doing it just and and i hope carol tool supporting it um, many of those destinations are destinations we already feature, but they have, a, um, we on Just Grenada have a level of, of, of specialism, which is um, there's some small inns, privately owned homes, farmhouses, it, bed and breakfast. So it's, it, it's a luxury product, but to quite a different client. Um, right. 
uh, and they do it beautifully well. And then, you know, we have a Slovenia program, just Slovenia. And that's, I think, a real opportunity for the trade because... Um, so strange, isn't it? Having all those Caribbean destinations and then why Slovenia? Yeah, and I'll be really honest with you, Lucy. When we were you know, looking at speaking to them about this opportunity, I was really, really excited. And, and I maybe wasn't excited about Slovenia because I don't know it. And I'll be really honest. I was oh, let's look at some figures and see. It's this, it's the second top seller. It's a is really it? important destination. Well, I've been to Slovenia win. and it is beautiful. So, but yeah. it's perhaps not what we would know you for or no. what people know very well. So, and, and that's it. So, which is another reason why we keep our brands kind of quite separate because there are there are customers. Um, and, I mean, just Slovenia is is, is is our is our second top selling destination from Just Grenada Group, um, and we have a wonderful DMC down there. And we do lots of um, multi center touring and, and people staying in farm stays and driving around right. and, and so it, it's a very really unique product and, I, and it's a product that i know because i speak to agents i know that our agents would love to be able to access it so, so are you when... going to let are you going to let them we wrote a story paul not to pick on you but you said it was going to go to the trade in january and uh we're in july so what's the plan do you know, did I say January 23 or did I say January 24? Oh, I don't know. Did you say 24? Maybe yeah, that was it. No. it. We plan to do it. We 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 plan to we've got so many good ideas that we're rather falling over ourselves with delivering them. And I'll I'll, I'll take responsibility for that. But it's just um I, I, I think to, to roll it out to the trade, we've got to do that properly because the trade trusts us and, and it was fully our intention to do it last January. And we just didn't want to throw it out there. And, you know, we, 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 we want to back it up with training. We want to back yeah. it up with trips. We want to back it up with um, the full carpool service. So, yeah, we'll be doing it very soon and you'll be the first to know. All right. Good stuff. Well, you see, you've wet everyone's appetite now. They all want to know how they can get up to some of these amazing products. Um, you mentioned there, well, we've talked a lot about travel agents. You just mentioned fan trips there. I mean, obviously, we know you so well for your fantastic awards night that, uh, that you do, which uh, everybody loves. So talk to us about your um, support of agents, your distribution through agents. You know, are you seeing new agents coming on board? Is it existing agents doing more? Or, you know, how are you, are you going into more home workers? I mean, are you, tell us what's happening in that distribution channel for you and what trends you're seeing there. Yeah, I, I think it's a really exciting place to be. So about 85% of our business comes through agents. and. And that, and that often surprises people who don't know Carrefour so well, just because like, like a lot of luxury brands, they'd expect, it, they'd ex expect it to be almost the reverse of that with kind of 80% direct. We've always, um, I won't say found it easy because that, that sounds complacent, but we, we've, all, we, we, we've always worked really well with agents. I mean, I joined Carrefour in well, a long time ago, 25, 24 years ago. And we found that the fastest way for us to grow our business possibly was through agents, through good agents. Um, yeah. So that continues to grow. We, 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 you know, agents are part of our DNA. They're not external. They're not external to the carpool story. They're very much a, a, an integral. Integral, part. yeah. Yeah, but they are part of our DNA. They're everything. You know, we speak to our agents every single day, twenty times a day, all of us. You know. And but did you not suffer at all? You know, after the pandemic, so many agents left the industry. There was a, you know, big turnover. Yeah that some are still not up to speed, you know, they're still not having to work on fewer people. I mean, I know we were talking to one agent the other day, she had 15 staff before the pandemic and she's still only at seven. I yeah. mean, by the way, working quite efficiently and her profits are getting back up, so it's great. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, and this is, a, this is a good luxury agent I'm talking about, but they're not all back to speed. So did that hit you at all? We didn't. Do you know, it probably did. It probably did, but you don't know that's why it was. It, the, the mix of who we work with changed quite a lot during the pandemic. And, you know, we, we never control who the next person to phone us is. And, and, yeah. and you know, sometimes it's someone we've been working with 25 years, other, other times. And I'll give an example of that. We did a booking, we did a booking about four weeks ago. It was a very big booking, 115, what, well, 115,000 pounds. So but it was off an agent who'd never booked with us before, but was rec was recommended to us by one of her mates who works for who, who is a good agent of ours. So wow. we don't control how these bookings come to us. We all you know, we, we offer everyone the same consistent service. I think the the way agents are working 
so differently. It probably how we're all working a little bit differently. We're all achieving great things with fewer staff and fewer resources and everything else. Because um, you know, Carol Dawes is saying, you know, we, we I don't know whether we took the opportunity to re-engineer our business or we it was forced upon us, but we did re-engineer our business. Yeah. During the pandemic. Well, most people had to, didn't yeah. they? I mean, uh, and, been... and, and 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 to build you know, to, to rebuild profits again and to rebuild balance sheets again, and that everyone's still very much in in that zone. So. Yeah, we're picking up a lot of new agents, um, which we absolutely love. But the most important thing is is, is never never forget the loyal agents who've yeah. always worked with you as well. But, but I'm interested that you say we can't control who calls you, you know, calls you. And, the, you know, you, this the example you gave was someone who'd been recommended by a friend. But But you do, you can control it because you do have a team who go out and court yeah. and support and train and engage and yeah. you know so it can't all be kind of coming no, in without no, you doing anything you must be doing something to have those to have that growth pool when you've got 85 percent of your business through the trade you must be yeah working hard to find these new age to get this new business you must be yeah we 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 yeah, no, we do, and, and I wouldn't want to mislead you on that, but all we can do is go up to those agents and tell them about us and share the love and the passion and why we're special. But you know, agents are professionals and they have relationships in place elsewhere. And you, you, you what I suppose what I mean is you've got, to earn, you've got to earn it. We do, yeah, so we do all of that. Rebecca's our head of sales, she's worked with, next month, she's been with me for 20 years now. She's 20 years of working with these agents, and her, her and her team. 20 years of working with you, Paul, that's, that needs that. Can you imagine? I know, <laughs> I know. I, I struggle working with me. Yeah, I, I've got a few people celebrating big milestones this year, but it's, um, but yes, yeah, so we absolutely do that. We, you know, not, not aggressively, but enthusiastically, we go off to new business all the time to, yeah. to, to, to spread the love, to, to, to share the character story. But then you wait because... You know, luxury travel, holidays are expensive, lead times are very long. In many cases, they might be well impressed with yeah. what they're them, but they, 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 their big bookings aren't going to come through for another six, seven, nine months. So that's when you wait. And the proof of the pudding is always in the booking itself, how yeah. you handle it. How you handle it, how you serve everyone, it. Everyone promises a lot, Liz. You know this, right? Everyone everyone talks a good game. Everyone. Well, yeah, well, that was going to be my next question because in the luxury market, everyone tells me they offer the most amazing yeah. service and they're the most knowledgeable. And so what what is it that Characters does? What, you know, perhaps it is because it, it's, it was family run from so long. I don't know. What What is it that is your USP that you think in, yeah. keeps no, agents I think coming I, back I think to you? I think it's a really, really good point because, you know, it used to be much easier than this because it used to be, we, we've always, ever since I walked through the door at Carrefour, the 1st of June, 1999, we've talked about our people, we've talked, we put our people front and centre, we've talked about our people, we've talked about our culture, we've talked about you know, the soul of the company. Yeah. Now, now everybody does that, so guess what? It, um, I think people know we mean it. Uh, and, 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 and that that might sound like a bit of a weak answer. People know we mean it. People know agents when they've got a sticky problem and they can phone any one of us at any time of night and get an answer and yeah. get action. That that's the difference. It's very well, and that was a big issue, you know, in the pandemic when that was yeah. well, uh, obviously there were many things that were difficult with refunds yeah. and stuff, but just being able to get hold of somebody. Yeah, was 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 hard, and that no, and, and, that, and, and, that and it really was. And, and and we've, you know, I'm, you know, again, you wouldn't want to sound complacent about this. The the pandemic gave good operators a real opportunity to show just how good they were. I include yeah. us in because that was obviously impossible for our agents. And yeah, impossible. people forget as well. It's impossible for their poor clients, right? Yeah. Who, who, who are having a hellish time so it gave us that was a good opportunity so i don't know we we know who we are we know how we do things and then we you know, in my team i've got a sales team of 10 i've got last year i had two people celebrate 25 years of cab tours and these wow. are two outstanding sales people i'm not going to name them because they'll get they'll get stolen off me but <laughs> two two of them in a team of 10 um 25 years, 
my head of sales next 4th of August, she'll celebrate 20 years. That's um, remarkable. Three other people in my uh, in my sales team will be celebrating 15 and 17 years. And then the newbies will be celebrating, two of them will be celebrating 10 years. So that's- And, you, and you're me. calling them new, and I love that you're calling them newbies. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still on probation. But so, no, we, <laughs> no, but we, do, have, no, but we do have an amazing team. And, you yeah. know, it, it's such a cliche that people will talk about people buy from people, but, but, but people do buy from people. And if you speak to an agent, if you ever were interested to speak to an agent about why they booked with us, it, it's not it's not to do with our fancy brand. It's not to do with our. It's to do with the relationship that they build up with my team over twenty five years. And they can just years. call someone, and they they know them by name, and they will sort out any issues they've got. Yeah, yeah. So I yeah. I think I think that's why. But you, you're right. It's becoming increasingly difficult to differentiate oh, when, yeah. when every when everybody says the same thing. But agents know. Agents, I, I like that. And then you, you mentioned there that through the pandemic, operators, or good operators and good agents as well, had this fantastic opportunity actually to show their worth. And uh, we felt it might be this big turning point that everyone would realise they needed to book through an agent and with a really reputable a uh, tour operator. Do you think that people have got short memories or long You know, I, do you think that will continue or are we now, you know, you were saying some of these old trends are coming back in. I, you know, I, I guess I'm worried that people might have really needed, you know, good support during the pandemic and shortly afterwards and whether they're now thinking, oh, I can do it myself. Yeah. Do you know, Lucy, I tell you what, I think people have got short memories. I wish they did. I think people, I short, but I, 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 I think the momentum is still with us. It's right. still with the independent agents. And it's what and how do we keep do that with, then? What they do with it, right? Yeah. And and life is pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, and, and it just is for all of us, for whatever yeah. reason, it's pre and post. We are now, everyone hopefully had an incredible year last year, and hopefully they're having a, a, a good year this year. This is the opportunity to absolutely slam every bit of grease heat wave, vain wildfire. Easy jet flight cancellations, border force strike, baggage trip. Every one of those is an opportunity for us. And it's bloody hard work and it's hassle. But that's, we if we have a kind of tools, this is what we do. We shoehorn our way into the middle of all of these things and try and make a difference. <laughs> and try and make a difference. It's exhausting. But that's the value we offer. That's that almost in a way we shouldn't. See, I mean, of course, it's disruption and it's a headache, but you're saying, look at that as an opportunity because that's where you add value. Lucy, that that's that's only where we add value. That, that that not only, but you know, obviously our expertise. But in a small world, anyone can hop onto Booking.com and choose a seven night stay somewhere and book their flight, and off they go. But it, these problems, and I'm not I'm not trying to be a life coach about it, but. These problems give us all an opportunity to become yeah. relevant and to demonstrate. So to answer your question, I think people have got short memories. And I remember saying to you once, oh, you know, the worst thing we could do is go back to our old ways. And I don't mean ours, but yeah. the world, right? But people are slipping back into that. Yeah. And so we've got to we've got to remind them. Yeah, every day. Uh, every day. And all of these operational thing all the things that drive us all nuts are the opportunities for us to demonstrate this is why you booked with me and yeah. you know, a lot of agents are getting really good at this and you kind of see it on social media and you know I've, i think i've got 850 friends on facebook and i think about 840 of them are travel agents but it's uh, you know you see how good they i think everyone's become better at promoting themselves not themselves promoting their services to their clients and, and yeah we, we all wish um we didn't have these issues but these issues do that's how they do it that's how yeah. we have to keep ourselves um on the, on, 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 on the front foot i think oh absolutely good advice actually that's for anyone watching this um let's um i mean paul you and i could talk forever but we ought to look at, ahead to the future a Cu couple of questions obviously you had um an investment because you had sort of a, a u.s company taking a stake in you so um that you know that seemed very smooth but it'd be good to know perhaps a little bit more about why you did it and what it's going to mean for the business. Maybe it's just business as usual, but or maybe there's sort of a bigger grand plan at stake and you might be sort of 
taken over the world with this extra investment. Yeah. But can you no, just tell us yeah. a little bit about that, what that means? We, we won't take over the world. When I, I led a management buyout of Carab Tour in 2019. Um, no. Great timing, Paul. Just yeah, to... I know, I know. <laughs> it was, um, and when I was, without going into too much kind of personal detail, when I wanted to leave the buyout, I've, I've, been, I've been running the company uh, and had been a shareholder for whatever that would have been, 20 years up until that point. I knew that I wanted to do things differently. I know why we're special. I know, I know where our value is. I know the difference we make with our agents and our clients. But I also knew that the, the outlook for small, independently owned private companies in travel was, you know, it's forget the pandemic, we didn't even know about that. But you know, there was there was choppy waters ahead. And I had long been talking to some friends, a friend of mine who I've known for 30 years, he used to own a hotel in the Caribbean, and he set up um, a luxury tour operator. With very in, similar values. Yeah, in New York. I mean, remarkably similar values, Lucy. Honestly, it was like looking in a the mirror. They, they're, their people are amazing, their products are amazing. They're 100% through travel agents. They sell through, um, through, through the US, and also out of Singapore and Australasia. Um, and we had long talked about doing something together because of the regulatory, how shall I put it, sensitivities of, and reg, um, you know restrictions in the UK. It was decided that I would put that I would go through with the purchase, and then we would almost immediately afterwards convert their investment into equity. Um, I'm being a bit technical here, but that conversion didn't happen because of the yeah. pandemic, right? Yeah. So the plan was. In the in the March renewal, process. I remember we had a we had a conversation. And it I've got some news for you. And then, but, so the March renewal process was going to be that, but then of course the world changed. Yeah. So we had to sit on our hands, but we didn't sit on our hands. We used that time to really get to know each other, get to know. You know, it it felt like moving in together, get, understanding each other's businesses, um, and they converted their. Their investment in capital, I think it was in about October or November, gone, November 22. Um, the, the grand plan will be to bring our two companies entirely in, into a merger when the time is right. Um, and it, um, but not change anything whatsoever as far as operationally. Um, you know, the UK and the US, anyone who will tell you this, the UK and the US are, we share the same language, but in terms of everything else, the markets are very, very different. The language right. we use is very, very different. So we we are always aiming to be best in class in the UK and Ireland at Carab Tours. And the ID travel group are exactly the same in the US. Right. But there's, it, it's better to have scale. It, it, and, and to bring out the best in each other. And we're already yeah. doing it. We share ideas we, on product, on systems, on And does finance. it give you greater buying power like I know you and, sell very and, differently but are you already seeing some benefits because you must I guess use some of the same destinations and yeah and so, so under under so that, that will be the big opportunity so as far as the people who book holidays with us it's it's business as usual yeah behind the scenes our teams are working much more closely together and of course, there's going to be huge opportunities for, for just to learn from each other and to bring out the best in each other. There are things that we do that they, 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 they're really keen to learn from us. But equally, some of the stuff they do is stuff we haven't thought about. But product is just a really obvious opportunity in yeah. terms of, you know, we, we have a huge crossover. We have a huge crossover in the, in the Caribbean. Yeah. Um, they don't have a European program at all, but the, the American luxury traveller is clamouring for that. So they, yeah. so they have an opportunity. So, so yeah. that's where the difference will. will that that yeah. that's what we that's what we plan to do. I don't think we want to take over the world, but what we are building is a strong, service-led, sustainable luxury travel brand. Um, and you know, I, th I think there will be other opportunities as. Well, as we come together yeah which you may not have even thought of yet but I guess if you're an agent working with you and given the things we've been through I guess it gives people more reassurance that yeah. with, with that sort of backing that you know you are you're you're yeah. as you say sustainable and and solid and you know you're, you're going to well, be able well to I'll give you an example you know when this was always the plan so then we went through the pandemic and we're on other sides of the ocean we couldn't see each other for a year and a half 
but you know, just sharing ideas and best practice was was was, was wonderfully reassuring for them yeah. and, and for me. So yeah, it, it's an exciting time for us. But I think you know we've all seen enough of these acquisitions or mergers to see how often people get it wrong. So that's why with the Just Grenada group, when we bought the Just Grenada group back in um, April 22, it's so important Liz, to keep the heart and soul yeah. completely protected because that's what people are buying. Yeah. All the boring, no one, no one on this call wants to hear about what we'll do on systems and- on back offices, no, no, we're not. No, you can, no, exactly. let's not go there. You, you can watch all of your likes, yeah. But now <laughs> but that that's where you can save the money and do stuff. But yeah. where what, what's important is service, price, and the market. Heart. Yeah. And, and that's what we're going to look after. And will and have you got any other gaps in your portfolio or just you know opportunities that you've identified? So, you know, I, I guess I'm asking, would will you be on the acquisition trail again? Might there be other companies you'd look look at to uh, to bolt yeah, on? Yeah, I, 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 th I think I think they will. I mean, you know. The, the Just Grenada acquisition was just a really good case in point. It worked like a dream. That they were a dream to, to deal with, they had a wonderful reputation, and we really thoughtfully and seamlessly integrated them into our system while making sure that they remain loved and valued and that they can continue to do what they do best. So we know that we can do this, and what we're doing with the ID Travel Group. So as opportunities come up, it's always it's always interesting. But equally, you know, we're in the business of selling holidays, and I think what we don't want to do is become distracted too much because all of this takes time, Lucy. And yeah, absolutely. What we, what we like doing is, is is working with travel agents. Yeah, absolutely. Right, we we probably ought to wrap up in a minute, but you did just mention that Carib Tours obviously is in the UK and Ireland, and we haven't really talked about your Irish business. Um, you know, it's very easy to be very focused on. Uh, here but what's happening in your Irish business is that doing well yeah so we you know you talk about me buying the business in 2019 and then the pandemic being bad timing um we we, we, we launched in Ireland just around the time of the Brexit vote I think um we launched in 2017 or 2018 in Ireland um and that was a slow start it was a slow burn for us because again the Irish you know, you've got, you've got to earn it, right? You, 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 yeah. you've, got, you've, got, you've got to earn respect. They've got to get to know you and you've got to invest. Not, you've got to invest your time in Ireland. Yes. So and we, understanding we, that market, get a different market. Good, and it is quite different to the UK yeah. market for, for, for 100 reasons. So uh, we've been selling holidays in Northern Ireland for 10 years. And so um, we went into the Republic of Ireland and then when the pandemic came and then the Brexit laws changed, it just became really, really tricky. I mean, almost yeah. impossible for a UK-based operator to be selling holidays in an EU jurisdiction. Um, yeah. so that's no one's, well, it's everyone's fault, but it isn't the Irish fault. Um, so we we finally got our licenses and insurances back in place this year, and the business is taking off like you wouldn't believe. Because, oh, great. Yeah, because the, the Irish market, they also have, you know, they, they had a bad pandemic. There was an awful lot of pent-up demand. Um, and there is a, there is a shortage of good, strong luxury players um, servicing the Irish market. We have we have a team over there. We have Joanne and um, and Alan who are who, who are our, our Dublin based team. Yeah, they, and they do like people to be on the ground. You know, you can't do it just from here. They absolutely do, and you, yeah. you know, it's, it's a lesson in life. We find it, you know, we find it everywhere. You, you can't patronise people. They know when they're being patronised. They've got really good local people who are professionals who give them what they need and give them the answers they need. So, yeah, we're working with a handful. The Irish market is obviously much smaller than the UK market, but it's a really lucrative um, stream of business for us. And we want to grow it. Yeah. A rich seam, a rich seam that you've identified there. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I'm, that. Pleased that's, I'm pleased that's come good. That's great. Uh, all right. So, look, we, we better finish, Paul, but. Just to just to finish, then um, our outlook for this year. Uh, I mean, you, you're, you're hoping it will be pretty smooth, but if there are problems, that's when we come into our own and we absolutely use those to to show our worth. But are you are you confident ultimately of a good 2023 and into 2024? Because you, you, not your product you'll be selling for next year, really, won't you? Now, yeah. So, so 2024 is looking incredibly strong already. 
2023, our financial year ends on the 30th of September. I mean, Christmas is looking a bit softer than we would like, but is a lot's coming in a bit later. And, you know, okay. people always have about trends and of people booking early or late. It's impossible to know. I mean, yeah, we, we, it used to be a very, very easy to yeah. track curve, didn't it? But you're right, yeah. it's all, all over. And, and, and so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, we've, we've, we've got availability for October half term, which I wish we didn't, and we've still got um, a bit of space for Christmas. But, yeah, we feel good about it. I mean, I, I think life looks good, and I think life looks good from a luxury travel agent perspective but and I, 2024 I, I think yeah i think 2024 but I, I think we're all going back to a normal um yeah a normal booking uh outlook for 2024 yeah. and and i think yeah i think we uh, speaking from a kind of tours perspective we're gonna have to work harder than we've ever worked yeah. before and going right back to what we talked about where you were saying there's more competition now you're saying agents are telling you it's Far East or touring or yeah. experiential travel, do you just kind of get on with that and still do what you do really well? Or will you ever consider thinking, well, if that's where the market's going, we need to we need to sort of move into that at those areas? It depends what they say. The temptation, if you're in my seat, is to react to everything and it, follow it. Yeah. And, and I, I I know I know where we add value. I really do. Where you're, I know where we are good. We sell luxury beach holidays like no one else, um, whether that's in the Caribbean or in Mykonos or um, Maldives. That's my passion. There is lots of opportunities, and the ID Travel Group, uh, my partners in the US, they've got a much more differentiated product. And, okay. and I'm watching with you, their Africa program is absolutely amazing. So there are lots of opportunities, but the danger is no. Agents love, but no, maybe they don't love us. Agents want us for what we do brilliantly. And if we can do something brilliantly, Lucy, we'll be there in a heartbeat. Yeah, but you but, won't do it unless it's brilliant. Ne ne never half-baked, no. Right, yes. Do you, what is it? A jack of all trains, but a master of none, which yeah, is not, yeah. not what and you want. And that isn't for us. So, yeah, we not have value. Because agents, agents know the difference, right? Agents yeah. know the difference. Oh, yeah, so. they're not silly. No. Uh, all right. Well, listen, we've covered a lot, Paul. I think, I, think we we, I think we've put the world to right there a little bit. So we're really grateful for your time. It's so good to get your take on what's going on. And it's also fantastic to hear that you're doing so well. We were very grateful to you during the pandemic when you came on and talked so openly. And it's, uh, you know, you were very candid then. And it's just great that you're doing so well. Oh, well, thank you very much for having me. I, I've really enjoyed the opportunity to speak to you. Oh, come on again soon. We'll talk uh, to you anytime. Again. I'm always available. All right. Lovely. See you soon, Paul. Thank Thanks, you. Lucy.